So how did these uh, active balances perform? The, uh, the DALI active balances and the JK BMS with built-in active balancing. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Wolfgrid Van Life and in this episode we are taking a look at the active balancer supplied by DALI. There are two of them, this, this active one that you can uh, connect to and control via software and this one that is simply a little hardware unit. <coughs> and uh, we're looking at the JK BMS with active balance built in. Right, let me get to the app and uh, let's see what this tells us. <clears throat> so let's cover the, uh, the DALI one first. And uh, as you can see from the screen, uh, we've got a number of uh, devices here. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna say right from the start, one of the things that I found a little bit frustrating with DALI is that you have this is the active balancer that you can uh, connect to with Bluetooth. So the actual description is software active equalizer. So, and this has uh, got this Bluetooth dongle and you can see it's, uh, it's got a serial number on the Bluetooth dongle so you know what you're connecting to. So this one ends in F2. And we've got a BMS, a 200 amp BMS, just uh, attached loosely as you can see and that one ends in 6.9 so there are two separate Bluetooth devices so let's connect first to the uh, the BMS I'm just going to show you some details on the BMS so that ends in 6.9 <clears throat> so we go into that right when that is uh, loaded uh, so the cells are in a at a hundred percent state of charge and very impressive. The uh, delta is 0 0.002. It was hovering around 0 0.001 to 0 0.003 earlier on. Um, so this is what the um, BMS is telling us. Uh, if we go and you, and you can see the here and the battery strings, there are four of them, and you can see the voltages are very, very similar and uh, with a very low delta. So uh, the, these this BMS is set uh, connected to this for a month and uh, has uh, balanced these beautifully. So the, to have a 100% state of charge with such a low delta, and right now the delta is just about nothing, with such a low delta is very impressive uh, to have, uh, you know, w when your state of charge is above the upper knee, to have such a low delta is quite nice. So they have balanced beautifully. <coughs> but one of the things that I just wanted to take you through was uh, this is the BMS that we are attached to. You've got an active balance tab and um, this isn't really doing anything for you because there is no active balancing from the BMS. So it's a little bit misleading to say, you know, to have active balance on here. Uh, and the preferences do actually work on here. So you've got your, uh, your high protect and low protect and all that sort of stuff. So we've set it to 14.4 and so happy with everything there. But let's go back to, uh, so this was NN69, which is the BMS. Let's go to F2, which is the active balancer. One of the complicated things here <coughs> is that uh, the, the app is the same and um, you know, you can't really see the current that it's charging at, uh, and you 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 can see the uh, the, the voltage thirteen point four, but you can obviously see in the in this you can see again the battery string so one two three four, and that's because you've got like balance leads coming off here similar to the ones here. So you're connecting two sets of balance leads, one for the BMS and one for the active balancer. Um, <clears throat> but again, the, uh, the very nice low delta, it's showing exactly the same information that the BMS showed. Uh, obviously this can't show the um, whether it's charging or and whether the, the charge MOS or discharge MOS is active. Um, and when you come to the active balancer, this is where you would configure this. So one of the confusing thing is the BMS app has the same thing as the active balancer and uh, you can only actually set these in, in the active balance and not in the BMS app. So it's a little bit confusing there and you have to connect to one or the other to see what the overall state is of, of everything. Um, <clears throat> but in this, uh, 
if I look at it's currently the active balancing is off. That's because it is fully balanced everything. And that is because the here in this um, right near the bottom, the, the balanced open diff vault is 0 0.05. Uh, there is no difference at this stage like that. So, you know, the difference is so, so tiny that everything is balanced out. So uh, that's one thing you could set as the the balanced open default, the uh, balanced open start volt, they all have to have reached 3.1 volt uh, before they start balancing. This was um, this was a, a bit of a, an issue at one stage because we uh, made the cells so uneven to start with that uh, only one was 3.1 volt and uh, it took a while before it actually you know, they're all kicked into range. Um, I'm, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how that uh, works. You know, whether only one needs to reach 3.1 volts is something we're going to be investigating. But yeah, for, for a while it wouldn't do any balancing whatsoever until, uh, it, until it reached some sort of threshold and then it was able to, to balance. Um, <clears throat> but we got uh, high protect and low protect. I don't know what they, I think these are are here so that when they're balancing they won't actually uh, push anything above 3.65 or won't drain anything to below 2.5. So, and uh, the active balancer has the same sort of preferences as we can see. Uh, you even got the cell characteristics which says it's 50 amp hours, which it's not obviously in temperature, which uh, none of the, I, I guess that could be set that if it is, um, well, you don't, if it's below zero, you don't want uh, active balancing to be taking place. So I guess uh, what you do here is you would change that to say five degrees. Uh, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and hit set again. And that would mean that the active balancing only kicks in when it's above five degrees centigrade. So very happy with the way that the uh, active balancer managed to balance these cells. And these are, are really bad quality cells. They, they're not good at all. Um, these were the cells that we bought as 420 amp hour that are actually 240. Uh, no, they were bought as 420, yeah, and they're actually 240. And uh, horrific quality, but it has balanced them beautifully. So if you have cells that are a bit of a problem, uh, that you have uh, runaway cells, etc., then an active balancer like this <coughs> would actually do the trick quite nicely. And so, well impressed with that. Let's uh, have a look at the JK now. With this has also been sitting for about a month. JK with that, you have to hit your scan, and that shows you uh, all of the devices there. So let's connect to that. It's a bit of a beep coming from there to tell us that it has connected. What I like about the JK compared to the uh, DALI app is that all of the important information is simply on one screen. You can see everything that you need to without having to scroll anything at all. So it shows us under the cells voltage, shows us the voltage of the four, um, four, four strings or four cells. And uh, here towards the top right, it's got cell volt diff. As you can see, that's 0 0.002. So actually these have, both the balances have worked very efficiently to bring all of the cells to the same level on both. So both of these uh, battery packs have got fairly bad quality cells. These are, if you, you can't see from the angle that you're at, but they really swollen quite badly. Uh, big gaps between like five millimeter gap between them. And um, so bad quality cells, but it has balanced them beautifully on the JK to uh, a delta of 0, 0.00, at the moment it's showing 000, uh, but it's hovering between 0, 0.000 and 0 0.002. So very, very happy with that uh, delta. That's, that's great. So one of the things that I really like about this JK BMS is uh, that it shows you the, uh, the wire resistance here at the bottom, so cells wire resistance. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I like that is because, so we sell hundreds of BMSs, um, and we've sold mostly daily BMSs. And we literally have sold hundreds of them, and we've sent them all around Europe. Uh, we've even sent some to the States, believe it or not. And 
the biggest support issue that we face with the daily BMS uh, arises from incorrectly attached balance leads. And uh, that could be, uh, there could be a number of reasons for that. So the crimping could have been done badly or the actual fastening on the pack. And usually our advice to anybody that gets hold of us and says, we think the BMS is wrong because uh, we're putting our multimeter onto the cells and it's not reading the same as the BMS and things, you know, funny things are happening. And we usually advise our, our clients to completely disassemble the pack completely, uh, preferably change the cells around into a different order. And I know that's a big deal because sometimes they're bound with tape and that sort of thing that you have to take off. And mostly they are fastened in some way or compressed in, into thread bars or something like that. We tell them, take everything apart and put it back together again, but be really, really careful and check all of your crimps really carefully. You know, if you've already um, put heat shrink onto your your lugs and that sort of thing, then um, you know, just try and recrimp through it, and you know, and you know, wiggle the cables and check if there's an issue there. the The idea being that <clears throat> if there's a problem with the cell, and and it's not just BMS as we sell, we also sell the actual cells. If there's a problem with uh, reading voltage off a cell, and people think the cell is faulty by changing the order, if you still have the problem on the new cell in that new order, then obviously the cell isn't the problem, it's your balance lead that's the problem. And there you need to check crimping, etc. So coming back to this, the cell's wire resistance is absolutely great because uh, if there is a bit of an issue, uh, you'll see it pretty much straight away. And um, interestingly that we have uh, 0.051 and 5757, in the scheme of things that's actually a very, very low resistance difference. But it is interesting that two of them are 0 0.051 and the others are 0 0.057. Uh, we, these, these are good crimps, so we don't know if the uh, resistance is due to the actual crimp or whether it's just the way it fastened on or it's actually something in the cell. But either way, having this shown on the JK is actually really handy for us to support things. Uh, but as I said earlier, the fact that you see everything in one place on one app uh, without having to scroll around is actually really, really great. To summarize then, uh, we left uh, both of these packs connected to their active balances for a month. Uh, we've um, discharged and recharged this a few times uh, just to test out how the JK is doing. But um, we are well pleased with both the JK BMS in terms of its active balancing and the DALI active balancer. We've also put this, it's disconnected now, but this is the little 4S um, hardware active balancer or it, as they call it, the hardware active equalizer uh, made by Dali. So this has also been uh, tested fairly thoroughly and it also eventually gets the pack nicely, uh, you know, every, everything up to the same voltage. Um, if your cells are horrifically out, um, uh, this may take a very, very long time to get them uh, back up there, but to be fair, over a period of a month, it has actually done that. We had these horrifically different and it has brought them all to the same level. So, uh, would I recommend uh, either the DALI Active Balancer or the JK uh, BMS with Active Balancing? Yes, I would recommend both without hesitation at this stage. Uh, it just in terms of act Active Balancing, uh, what I would say uh, the uh, DALI, you've got to uh, attach extra things, so uh, you've got to attach a second set of balance leads, so if you were to install this, you would pretty much be taking your pack apart unless you can just attach it to the top of your studs uh, and add this in, and you'd have two Bluetooth dongles that you're connecting to with a bit of confusion around the software. Uh, with the JK, you're just connecting one set of balance leads uh, you're connecting to one device with Bluetooth. Um, one could argue that the app is, is better laid out, a better real use of the real estate, less scrolling, that sort of thing. And very happy with this. Thanks, folks. So we'll see you in the next episode.